In this video, we're going to solve a fluid's FRQ. Tank X is a large cylindrical tank that is partially filled with water as shown in figure 1. The bottom of tank X is connected to a short horizontal pipe. A valve that is initially closed can be opened to allow water to flow through the pipe and exit through the other end of the pipe. Two blocks A and B have identical dimensions and are placed in the tank. Both blocks float at rest and are partially submerged in the water. The water and air can be modeled as consisting of individual particles that are in continuous random motion. In terms of interactions with both water and air particles, explain why there is an upward buoyant force exerted on each block. So at the top of the block are air particles that are colliding with it and they are exerting a downward force. At the bottom of the block, there are water particles colliding with it and they are exerting an upward force. The force by the water particles are greater than the force by the air particles. So therefore, we have a net upward force, which we call the buoyant force. The valve is then opened and water flows out through the pipe. The surface of the water moves downward. When block A touches the bottom of tank X, block B is still above the bottom of tank X. Which block has a greater density? Briefly explain your reasoning. Since the blocks are floating, we know that the buoyant force is equal to the gravitational force. And since that's the case, the blocks displace a fluid equal to its own weight. Since block A touches the bottom first, it displaces more water. Since it displaces more water, we know that it is heavier. Since it's heavier, we know it has more mass. Since these two blocks have the same volume, and we know that density is mass over volume, the block that has more mass has a greater density. And since block A has more mass, it has a greater density. Now we're going to take a look at tank Y. Tank Y is a large tank with a top open to the air, as shown in figure two. The bottom of tank Y is connected to a short horizontal pipe of radius R with a closed valve. Tank Y is filled with water to height H naught above the horizontal pipe. Tank Y is specially designed so that when the valve is open, the surface of the water moves downward at a constant speed Vs. At time t equals zero, the valve is opened. Derive the relationship between the speed Vp at which water exits the pipe and the changing height h of the surface of the water above the pipe to show that Vp is equal to square root Vs squared plus 2gh. So we're going to start with Bernoulli's equation, which states that P1 plus 1 over 2 rho V1 squared plus rho GH1 equals P2 plus 1 over 2 rho V2 squared plus rho GH2. Now, since the question states that the top of the water surface and also the pipe exit at the bottom is open to air, we know that P1 is equal to P2. And we also know that uh, at the exit valve at the bottom, we're going to set that as our zero reference line. So H2 will also be zero. Since P1 is equal to P2, they will cancel each other out. That leaves us with 1 over 2 rho Vs squared plus rho GH is equal to 1 over 2 rho Vp squared. Now notice that there are rows on... Um, on the left and the right side, which we can also cancel out. And I'm going to multiply two on both sides to get rid of the one half. And that leaves us with Vs squared plus two GH is equal to Vp squared. And if we solve for Vp, we get square root Vs squared plus two GH, which is what we're looking for in this question. All right, the next question states, derive the relationship between Vp and the changing radius r of the top surface of the water to show that Vp equals big R squared divided by little r squared times Vs. In this question, we're going to use the continuity equation, which states that A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2. So A is the uh, surface area, cross-sectional surface area, and V is the speed of the uh, fluid. At the top of the uh, at the top surface of the fluid, uh, a we're going to set a one equal to pi times big R squared, and at the uh, pipe exit at the bottom, we're going to set a two equal to pi little r squared. 
So if we substitute these areas into the continuity equation, we get uh, pi big R squared Vs is equal to pi little r squared Vp. And we solve for Vp, we get big R squared divided by little r squared times Vs, which is what we're looking for in this question. All right, next question. When the radius r, big R, of the tank is sufficiently greater than little r, the speed Vp can be approximated as Vp is equal to square root 2gh. Justify this claim. So I'm going to start off with this equation right here, which was uh, given to us prior, but we're going to solve it um, for Vs. So it was given for Vp, but we're going to solve it for Vs, which is equal to little r squared divided by big R squared times Vp. And since big R is much greater than little r, that means that that fraction right here is going to become very, very small. And since that becomes very, very small, we know that Vs is going to be much smaller than Vp. Or we can say that uh, Vs is going to be approximately 0. And if, v, if Vs is approximately 0, that means that Vp is approximately square root 2gh. Now we're going to take a look at tank Z. Tank Z is a large tank whose top is open to the air and is shaped as shown in figure 3. The bottom of tank Z is connected to a short horizontal pipe with a closed valve. Tank Z is filled with water to a height h naught above the horizontal pipe. At time t equals 0, the valve of tank Z is opened. Does the speed Vs at which the surface of the water moves downward increase, decrease, or remain the same over time as water exits the other end of the pipe? Justify your answer by using or referencing equations from both part Bi and part B2i. So we're going to reference those equations. So we have Vp is equal to square root Vs squared plus 2gh. And we also have Vs is equal to r squared little r squared divided by big R squared times Vp. I'm going to combine these two equations because the question is about Vs. So I'm going to substitute the uh, Vp, this equation right here. I'm going to substitute that into uh, Vp on the right equation right there. So that gives us Vs is equal to little r squared divided by big R squared times the square root of Vs squared plus 2gh. Now I want to focus on the uh, left part here on, on this part of the equation first. So if that big R increases, then that that part of the equation, little r squared divided by big R squared is going to decrease because that denominator is getting bigger. So that whole fraction is going to become uh, smaller. As a result of that, we would expect Vs to get smaller. But let's take a look at the right-hand side here, uh, this this part that's in within this radical portion here. So if the as the liquid is draining out, as the H decreases, what happens to uh, this radical um, part right here? So that, that part is also going to get smaller as well. So as H gets smaller, um, square root Vs squared plus 2GH is also going to get smaller. So overall, as the as big R increases and little h and the height decreases, the uh, the speed of the water at the surface uh, of the water surface is also going to decrease.